All right, welcome back to what I think is part 16 of our Angular Tour of Heroes tutorial. If you're new and this is the first video of this tutorial that you started watching, I recommend going back from the beginning and you can follow along and build up the application uh, together going through the playlist. I create a playlist here on YouTube that you can follow along in. And if you like this kind of stuff, don't forget to hit subscribe. Really appreciate it. We've been killing it on subscribers, views, watch hours. Everything's up compared to previous months. So I, I really do appreciate all you guys and all the support. Today we're gonna to be doing something I think is probably the next biggest thing you might be asking. How do I make a post request from Angular to our API? And just like before, we are using a Flask API, not this you know fake API that they actually do in the tutorial. We're using a real one that I just created real quick in Flask and Python. And hopefully if I remember, I will put the code and a GitHub repository, and that will be linked in the description. So if you don't care to write it yourself, you can just snag it from that. But I do recommend writing it yourself. Um, might be useful to learn that as well. And I have other Flask demo videos on this channel too, if you wanna check those out. So I don't know how long this video will be. I guess you'll see the timestamp, you know, when you go to click on this video, but get your coffee out. I think this will be fun. Yeah, I guess one of the first things I wanna look at, so, I looked up how to return, because I kind of forgot this, how to return a bad request, specifically a 400 error, like a record was not found, because we have this detail function, and let's look at that. Um, when we use this URL detail and then slash an ID, what if, the, uh, what if the ID isn't valid? What if they type in the route or in the URL up top, you know, detail slash 30? We don't have one with an ID of 30, right? At least I don't. Um, and I was just returning hello, which is stupid because that doesn't really tell you anything. So instead, what we can do is return the string record not found and then this 400 error. So that's what I'm going to try out. So let's just say record not uh, found and then comma 400 for that. That makes most sense because it loops through everything and it looks for it. And then at the very end, if it didn't find it, right, it will return this. So let me start up both the API and the Angular application. So these are running in two different uh, instances of VS Code. So we can do ng, wow, that's cool. ng serve. Um, if you haven't noticed, my uh, typing didn't get any better between last video and now. <laughs> Oh my God, so we need to CD to the Tour of Heroes and then do that. There we go. And I'm sorry, but this is zoomed in too much for me. I'm gonna zoom out. Um, throw that baby on 1080p so you can see it if, if you're having trouble seeing this. But for me, that was too zoomed in for my liking. Okay, so here we go. Let's click on an individual hero. And up here, um, that's where the detail is. So if we get 30, I'm curious what happens now. Nothing, but if we look at this dev console, it'll say the server responded with the status 400. So if we wanted to, we can handle that here, but I'm not gonna do that right now. Um, I just wanted to add that. But now we wanna add a button after we make a change. So if I change this to narco the best as its name, and I put a button here that says save changes, how do we send that to the, uh, the server via the API call and a post request. And that's what we're going to be working on in this video. So let's look at the API part first. We're going to add another route to our API. So I'm gonna do app route, and this one's just going to be um, update, I guess. And then the methods for this one, we're just doing post. This is a post method. And then in the function, we can name update. And I need to say def update. We're gonna define this. And the first thing we wanna do is we wanna grab the data that's being sent when they reach this endpoint. So we can do data is going to be equal to request dot data. And then for the sake of things, I just wanna show you what it looks like. Let's print the data for now. Okay, let's go back to our Angular part and let's add a new method here in the hero services. This is gonna be update hero. 
And we can return an observable of hero, but in reality, I'm not actually going to return anything. And we can say this dot HTTP client dot post, and we're going to post a hero type. And in here we put in the path as the first parameter. So I'm just gonna copy this and instead of heroes, it's going to be update. And then the second part is the data that's being passed along with this post request. So in our case, um, we're actually going to pass in a hero into this method. So we can say hero of type hero. And then our data that we're passing is just that hero. And we can return this, return this guy. So that's all I want to do. And now we need to add that save button under where you can change the name. So I can put it right here, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess right there will work. So let's put a button and say save changes. And let's make a click event. So if you remember, the click event is in the two parentheses and you say click. And then you can say is equal to some kind of method that gets run when this button is clicked. And we're just going to name this method save. And if I save this and it compiles, it's going to give us an error down here. And it's going to say that save does not exist in the TypeScript because we didn't define that method. So let's go ahead and do that next. We can add save and it's gonna return nothing. And we can say this dot hero service dot update hero, that new method we just created. And then let's pass in this hero right here. And before this, uh, it might be valuable to say, does this hero even have anything in it? Um, if so, then do this. So maybe we'll do that. And then we can say dot subscribe. And yeah, it's this dot hero, right? And so before this, let's say if this dot hero, then we'll do this. Okay, so let's see if this works. And if it does in our Python down here, when it prints out that data right here, we should be able to see it and see what it looks like. So let's change this to narco test. We'll hit the save changes and let's pull over this. And it got mad because we didn't return anything in this function here in Python and our script, but that's okay. We're gonna change that anyway. I just wanted to show you that this actually returns when we print it out. You can see it's a bytes because it has this B at the front. So this means that it's in bytes. And then what we wanna do is we actually wanna change that into a dictionary. So the first thing you can do is you can decode it so it's no longer bytes, it's a string. So let's do that first. Let's call this uh, string is going to be equal to data dot decode and then utf8. And then to turn it into a dictionary, we can say data is going to be equal to eval and then pass in string. Eval is one way to, I was looking this up, um, to convert a string into a dictionary. Some other people recommend using this ast.literal eval. They say it's safer than using eval, but for the quick way, I'm just going to use the regular eval. So let's think about what we're going to do now that we have this data that's passed in. We have the ID, so we can do something like we did here. We can go through all of the dictionary objects in this all heroes, we can see if the IDs match. And if so, we can make the name value of that dictionary object equal to the new one that was passed in. So we can say for X in all heroes, if X ID is equal to data ID, meaning their IDs match, Let's say x name is going to be equal to data name. So we're setting it equal to the new one's name. And then I'm just going to return x. And then at the very end, um, let's just return not found and then 400 again, meaning that none of the IDs matched. So it wasn't very good.
Okay, so I saved, it recompiled, or reran the script, I guess. And now let's try making a change. But the thing is, every time this script is rerun, these values and these names are gonna go back to what they originally were scripted as because it's not really a database where we can just really save the change. Um, that's definitely something you would be wanting to do in the real world is have it call a database, get that value, and then when we're updating, change that value in the database. But we're holding the values in code rather, so that makes it a little interesting. So let's see if this even works. Um, let's go back to our Angular app. Let's refresh. So nothing's saved, it's just gonna say narco details. But now if I say narco test and I save the change, and I refresh again, you can see it kept the narco test. So if we go to the heroes and we list all the heroes, now it's changed this narco test. We can do something else, Dr. Nice uh, 2. So this is the second one of Dr. Nice. We'll save, go back to the heroes, and you can see that's saved. But here's the thing. Let's say I quit this and I rerun this Tour of Heroes API. Since they're all written in code, like I said, those changes just don't, don't get saved anymore. It just refreshes to all these values all over again. So now if I go back to the app and I refresh, you can see Dr. Nice and Narco are back to what they originally were. So that's why you'd wanna use a database um, so that data is persistent and it stays as you expect it to. Maybe that's something we can do. We can make a nice little SQLite database in the next video. I'll see how I'm feeling about that and uh, maybe do it that way. So it's more real world like. But in this video, I just wanted to show you what I think is probably one of the most important API calls that you can do in Angular when you're making changes, especially is the post request, right? And so thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already and stay tuned for more in the future.